A Korean motovlogger, renowned for his content about cars and motorbikes, finds himself unexpectedly entangled in a harrowing encounter one fateful night. Despite his usual focus on automotive adventures, the tranquility of his nocturnal ride is shattered by a chilling and inexplicable phenomenon, thrusting him into an unforeseen realm of terror. Oh, plume, plume, while cruising on his motorbike, he's startled as he captures footage of a sinister figure hurtling towards him. With a headless form and seemingly absent arms, only empty sleeves flail in the wind. Reacting swiftly, he maneuvers to catch another glimpse of this unnerving apparition, his curiosity mingled with a growing sense of dread. Despite his efforts, he fails to capture another sighting of the eerie figure, only to be met with an unsettling sound echoing in the darkness. Preferring not to linger in the face of the unknown, he swiftly accelerates away, leaving behind the mysteries concealed within the Shroud of Night. So, what exactly did he encounter in the shadowy realm remains a mystery. Alex, Chelsea, Tanner, and Dakota, members of Project Fear, embark on a return journey to Joliet State Prison, renowned for its portrayal in the TV series Prison Break. Beyond its cinematic fame, the prison holds a lesser-known reputation for being haunted. Having previously encountered chilling phenomena during their initial visit, the team reunites to conduct a comprehensive investigation into the spectral occurrences within its walls once more. Usually when we separate and sleep alone, we try to communicate with whatever is in the building. But right now I am so uncomfortable that I don't even want, I don't even know if I want to. Joliet Prison has had some of the worst criminal offenders. Babyface Nelson, Richard Speck, even John Wayne Gacy spent time here. I just heard like a deep breath, a deep breath, like. <sighs> As Chelsea finds herself isolated and restrained, a bone chilling ominous sound of deep breathing permeates the air from behind her. But what happened to Tanner after this incident is really terrifying. I'm gonna break out the digital recorder. I'm gonna start asking questions. I need to do this now. This is a device that is able to pick up sounds that our ears cannot hear. I am going to start rolling. Who attacked me last time? Do you have a name? Why did you choose me? to attack.
Did I remind you of someone back in prison? Someone who pisses you off? All right, I'm gonna cut. Did you just cuss at me? I literally just said you. During the EVP recording, Tanner unexpectedly encounters a voice issuing curses directed at him, prompting serious consideration of its origin. While it may suggest the presence of a disturbed spirit or evoke notions of disfavor towards human presence, other explanations such as electronic anomalies or psychological influences. Thorough examination to uncover the truth behind the phenomenon. Leighton lives alone in an apartment somewhere in Manchester, has recently been entrusted with spare keys to access his elderly neighbor's flat in her absence. Tasked with the responsibility of checking urgent mail. One fateful day, as he ventures into her dwelling, he becomes startled by peculiar noises emanating from within the confines of a closet. Fooled by a mix of curiosity and concern, he elects to document his exploration, uncertain of the unsettling revelation that may await him behind closed doors. I've come round to my elderly neighbours to check a post, and I keep hearing a banging in that cupboard. Does anyone know what it could be? I've tried to open it, but the key is, it needs some sort of weird key, but I don't know what it, I've not got one. It's a bit fucking strange. I've been in here loads of times, I've never heard that noise before. So I'm hoping it's something that's not damaged or whatever. Does anyone know how I, how I can get in there without the key? I think I've got some other keys at mine, so I might go and get them now. Now, I've been in that flat loads of times, I've never heard that banging. I'm hoping something's not damaged because I'm effectively responsible for that flat, I'll touch back. Despite Leighton's efforts, he encounters frustration in his attempts to unlock the stubborn closet door, resorting to an array of variously sized Allen keys to no avail. Perplexed and determined, he seeks counsel from a neighboring resident who suggests an unconventional solution, the end of a spoon. Astonishingly, this improvised tool proves successful, granting Leighton access to the mysterious contents within. Another neighbor told me to try and open it with the back of a spoon. So I'm gonna check what it is now. Fucking hell. Now that's even fucking stranger because nothing that makes sense. That could be the noise. And now the noise has stopped and I've opened it, which is even stranger. Has anyone got any suggestions? Whoa, I'm getting out of this fucking flat. Employing the spoon as a makeshift lever, Lighton successfully coerces the closet door ajar, revealing an unexpected emptiness within, accompanied by the sudden cessation of the enigmatic noises. However, as time progresses and Lighton revisits his neighbor's abode for subsequent checks, peculiar occurrences manifest inside the closet. I'm going out soon, so I'm going to check if that weird banging what. Yo, what the fuck, guys? The fucking lights, come on. If anybody thinks someone's in it, what the fuck was that? 
I don't believe in ghost guys, but this is fucking weird. The lights just come on. And if you think I press the switch out here or something like that, I'll show you the fucking mm. switches. No switches on that side. There's two on this side. That's the bathroom that, that does nothing for the kitchen. This one is for the landing. Yo, what the fuck, guys? That's spooky as fuck. Upon one of his routine visits, Leighton is startled to witness the sudden illumination of lights within a room, devoid of any human presence to activate them. Undeterred by this unsettling event, he resumes his duties the following day, only to be confronted once more by the resumption of the clamorous banging emanating from the closet. This time, the reverberations intensify. The banging has started again, guys. Fucking hell, lights just come back on. People in the comments have been saying they, it might be rats. Maybe like they've damaged the electrical system, you know, biting wires or something. And the noise in here is wind or a rat trying to get out. Fucking hell. There's no one in there, guys, I promise. Once more, Lighton confronts the vacant interior of the closet finding no trace of any entity responsible for the unsettling noises. Despite meticulous scrutiny, no plausible explanation emerges for the source of these disturbances. As Lighton's videos gain widespread attention, a myriad of theories surface among intrigued viewers. Some speculate about the possibility of trapped rodents, while others attribute the phenomena to natural causes like wind currents. Yet, a faction of believers posits a more supernatural origin, suggesting the presence of a bound spirit within the confines of the room. Amidst the speculative discourse, viewers implore Lighton to relay the situation to his neighbor, urging him to ascertain whether she possesses any knowledge of the inexplicable occurrences or if they represent a recent development. However, Leighton's attempts to communicate with his neighbor yield no response, leaving him in a state of limbo as he awits her reply. Undeterred by the lack of resolution, Leighton returns to his neighbor's residence later in the evening, driven by an insatiable curiosity. It is during this subsequent visit that he makes a peculiar and unexpected discovery. Banging a starter again, guys. Ooh, switch as well. Light's gone off again. Someone said it might be the trip, but obviously the hallway light would go off as well. So I'm not really convinced, to be honest. Not convinced at all. Banging stops. Light's gone off. Now the fuck, what the fucking pixel? Jesus fucking Christ. Whoa, guys, what the fuck, man? Is that blood? Right guys, what the fuck? Doors opening, you can't say that's the wind, come on. Oh fucking rats. And there's certainly nobody in here, oh fucking hell. People are saying the room out in the kitchen leads to something here, but this is here. And the bathroom's there. I'm gonna open that door. Again. Move thing, move this out of the way properly. What the fuck, guys? Can't see anything. Let me put the light on. Look, there's nothing in there, guys. What can be doing that banging? People are saying there's people hiding in here. Oh, there's a door at the back. No, there's not. What's that? I can see something. <clears throat> Churchill coin. 1965. Churchill coin. Bit strange, isn't it? 
Right, service lads, anyone, anyone got any suggestions now? Lights are turning on and off by themselves. This door keeps, there's a banging noise from this door. And when they open it, it stops. People are saying it's wind, but it doesn't sound windy. And that fucking door opening, guys, come on, that's not wind now. Oh, I'm fucking shaking a little bit. <sighs> right, I'm going back to mine. Right, is it a In the confines of the closet room, he meticulously examines the gaps, uncovering a peculiar artifact, an aged 1965 Churchill coin. Initially inclined to leave it undisturbed, he succumbs to the suggestion of bringing the coin to his flat for further examination. Soon thereafter, he finds himself entangled in a series of inexplicable paranormal occurrences within his home, ultimately ruining the choice he made. Somebody in the comments told me to bring this coin back to mine, and when I was in the shower then, I could hear weird fucking scratching noises in here, so I want to try and record some footage if I can. Anyway, that's not even fucking funny, guys. What the fuck was that? Whoa, one second. What the fuck, my blinds have just opened. No, that's not even funny. No, there's nobody hiding or anything like that. What the fuck? Door was locked, nobody's on here. What the fuck was that, guys? That's not even funny anymore now. As he listens intently, scratching noises echo through his living room, leading him to witness the blinds unsettlingly shifting on their own. Gripped by a sense of dread, he swiftly acknowledges his error and resolves to return the coin to its rightful place in his neighbor's closet. Alas, his actions appear futile. For with the coin's introduction to his home, an ominous presence seems to have been unleashed. The unsettling phenomena persist unabated, leaving him ensnared in a relentless cycle of inexplicable activity. Whoa, I don't fucking think so. That chair keeps moving, guys. The escalating inexplicable events within his residence have deprived him of rest for the past two consecutive days. Despite his efforts, sleep remains elusive as the disturbances persist. Whoa, that's not good. Oh, sure. People are saying turn to the right. Um, I was recording the card, the blind card, because it started moving. So people are saying this fishing line. I don't know how I can prove it 100%. People are saying turn to the right because someone's there. I've closed the door. I'm doing a 360 spin. And someone said take the chair out of the room to prove there's no fishing line. I don't know what I can keep doing, guys. I'll take it all the way down. There's no fishing line. In an endeavour to dispel doubts, he meticulously examines the chairs and surrounding area, ensuring no trace of fishing wire remains attached. Fueled by a determination to provide irrefutable evidence, he initiates a live stream, meticulously showcasing the entire room to sceptical viewers, engaging with a witch on the stream, seeking insights into the unfolding events. He receives a disquieting proposition, the casting of black magic. Despite immediate warnings from concerned viewers, he proceeds with the witch's ritual. Yet, chilling occurrences intensify soon after their discussion, leaving him to confront the harrowing consequences of his decision. Start again, guys. What the 
thought this is since I spoke to that witch. I think this is a warning. What do you guys think? Oh, that's fucking scary. So what do you think guys? You think it's a warning? My phone went dead guys. Now oh, it stopped. I think this is a warning guys. It's never behaved like this. It's never made noise with like this on the table. The fucking laptop was moving. It was that aggressive. Just the laptop guys. The eerie atmosphere thickens as rapid tapping sounds emanate from the table, accompanied by the unsettling sight of the laptop trembling. Amidst these disturbances, questions arise regarding the connection between the closet and the enigmatic old coin. Could it be that the coin harbors a spectral attachment, perhaps tied to a tragic past event? So what do you think about all these paranormal occurrences? Let me know your thoughts in the comments.